Okay, we are live. Let me just share the screen. Okay. There we go. Can everyone see each other's faces? Uh, I'm looking at the screen. So far, I just see black on the actual video. Oh, now I can see it. There we go. Okay. Can yeah. everyone see each other's faces? Uh, I'm looking at. Uh, and volume's good too. Yeah, volume's good. Everything's too. good. Yeah. I'm just checking out for real quick. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anthony, and today we're going to be having a discussion about evolution. Here I have is Logan Blake, personal trainer. What up? Hey. And here I have another guest named uh, Bob. How's that going? Um, who would like to oh. um, start first? Yeah, so basically we're just uh, discussing evolution today and adaption and how uh, humans evolved, where they came from. Uh, so I'm just basically going to be starting um, where I think you know, the, the origins of humans, uh, where they came from and what happened. So, uh, basically the, the timeline is 395 million years ago, uh, tetrapods evolved from lobe finned fish as animals moved onto the land, right? So everybody came from the water, uh, originally. And uh, Pangaea, it was a supercontinent um, that was around 335 million years ago and started to break apart about 175 million years ago. Um, a little bit over 200 million years ago, there was dinosaurs, and the dinosaurs went extinct about 66 million years ago. And then 55 million years ago, um, was they found the the that's the first fossil uh, of a monkey. They called it the ancient monkey, and they found it in China. And China used to be a tropical area. You know, like the world was was totally different back then. Uh, China is the tropics, and they found uh, this ancient monkey that only ate insects, and its name was Archicebus uh, achilles. And then 47 million years ago, they found another monkey named Darwinus, Darwinius Massile, uh, and that was living in Messel Pit area of what is known now as modern Germany, right? So basically, this, this ancient monkey uh, started branching out over the years, and um, there's, there's a picture... I sent to Broski. I don't think uh, he knows how to screen share it, but I'll, I'll, I'll figure out how to share it later. And it shows how all the primates kind of branched out. And what happened basically is they all started eating uh, fruit from the trees. And so it started out as the one monkey eating uh, insects, and then they started eating fruit and leafy greens from the trees, uh, which caused them to grow. And they became too big to live in the trees. And a lot of them uh, were monkeys on the on the ground that would climb the trees, right, and walked around. Um, and between eight million and four million years ago, first the gorillas and then the chimpanzees and bonobos split off from the evolutionary lineage that led to humans. Uh, Three point eight million years ago, uh, Australopithecus. Uh, Ferencis, an ape-like hominid uh, living in Africa, and that's the one of the most famous fossils named Lucy that they found. Um, and then 200,000 years ago, Homo sapiens uh, evolved in Africa, right? So they found the, the very first, you know, original man came from Africa. And of course, that is tropics as well. So all this time, um, all of these monkeys 
that we evolved from, um, they all lived in tropical areas where just nothing but fruit uh, was abundant and leafy greens. And the, they did a study and they actually found that uh, they studied 140 different species of monkeys. And it all lined up perfectly with the, the monkeys that ate the most fruit, right? They were the, the ones with the biggest brains, the smartest monkeys, the most neurons. And um, it was uh, directly like in line with the ones who ate the most fruit were the smartest. And then the ones who ate more and more vegetables were less smart because it takes longer to um, break through the cell walls of vegetables in order to get the nutrients from it. Uh, you can easily absorb, uh, metabolize the nutrients from fruit. It'll go directly to the brain and feed the brain. So it fed the brain of humans, um, which is why humans are so smart. Uh, humans and other primates, they have to figure out where the fruit trees are. They remember what season, uh, or what season, where do they grow and what time of the year. They have to work together as a team to, to get the fruit and to protect themselves. And along the way, they figured out more and more tools. So the first tool was the insect tool, which was a stick that they dipped in an ant hole and pilled, uh, pulled it out, filled with ants. And then they used tools to knock down the fruits that were in hard places to get. And um, you know, the, the cooperation and teamwork to do all this stuff uh, led to bigger brains in some primates. And also you could see along with like, you know, humans having uh, the smallest amount of protein in the human breast milk that, you know, obviously protein was, was very low in their, in their food, right? Um, so people will say fire caused, you know, the, when, when humans figured out how to use fire, that's what led to bigger brains. Well, how did humans figure out how to make fire, right? How did, where did, where did that come from? It's not like they just started you know, lightning uh, hit a tree and then all of a sudden they're throwing potatoes in it, right? So they had to figure out like how to actually like cook the food, the tubers, so they're not just blackening them, that they're not burning their hands, like how to consistently light the fires over and over again in order to cook, how to, um, and then also how to store food uh, for the winter, right? So the food that had the longest uh, storage were things like potatoes and grains and apples and squash, things like that. So uh, in order for humans to move to other areas of the world and conquer other areas and explore, uh, they went into colder and colder climates, climates, which was bad for them. And they had to store things like potatoes and underground fridges uh, for the winter. And, you know, they cooked them and stuff like that. Um, and I'm sure cooking uh, did play a role and the invention of more and more tools played a role uh, and, and tubers and, and eating all these other things played a role in, in brain size. But it originally started from eating fruit and all these other things before the fire, which led humans to be as smart as they are. Otherwise, you would see monkeys trying to cook right now. Like, why aren't there monkeys out there trying to cook? You know, eventually they might, but they're not at that point yet. I'm sure it'll take, you know, a few million years, you know, who, who knows what will happen. But uh, that's basically how uh, humans got up to the point where they're at. Uh, hunting was a very small part. You would only do that for survival or maybe in war. You know, monkeys rage war on each other. And, uh, you know, they, they eat meat, you know, maybe once a month. Maybe there was a little bit of fishing going on. Uh, but yeah, mostly fruit and vegetables. So that's the food that humans are most adapted to. Um, adaption, just the word adaption in biology means a change or the process of change by which an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment. So if humans are from a tropical environment and that's where they've been for the majority of millions and millions and millions of years, that's their best suited environment, which means weather and food. So whatever food is in the tropical environment and the weather is best suited for humans, right? Um, now, recently, uh, there's been other foods that come into play, like uh, oil has been around for the past, you know, 5,000, 6,000 years, you know, cow's milk, a short period, just like that. 
Uh, humans are a little bit adapted to it, but not really. Still, still really bad for them, causes major health problems. Um, grains. Now, grains, there's a lot of grains that have been around, like uh, buckwheat, millet, quinoa, spelt, amaranth, oat groats, and some organic brown and wild rice. Uh, but other other grains really bad for you because they're very new as well. So if you're going to look for uh, grains to eat, those are the ones that have been around throughout evolution and adaption. Um, also, uh, what else here? Food-wise, processed food. So processed food has only been around really for the past 100 years or so. Um, if you look at the history of processed foods, now cooking is a process and, and salting and things like that. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, just specifically since 1910, uh, foods like uh, Oreo cookies and, and hot dogs and Aunt Jemima syrup and mayonnaise and all these things, that just started coming out in 1910. So in the past 100 years, processed foods um, have come out. And so that's why those are really bad for you as well, because they're very new. So basically, that's all I have to say about the adaption and evolution of humans and what they're best uh, adapted to. If anybody wants to see any of the information uh, that I just talked about, articles or studies or things like that, I have all those as well. And I'll link some pictures and studies in the comment section below. And uh, yeah, so now Bob Bob is going to say what he, uh, what he thinks about evolution, and uh, we're going to discuss that. All right, so um, so what you just said, there, that's basically the most commonly accepted uh, view of evolution, right? The, uh, how we, you know, how we uh, evolved from, you know, from a lower species up to, you know, up to human beings as we are today. Now, um, yeah, except for except for hunting, though, people people think we hunted a lot more than we did. And they think that the fruit and vegetable part was lower, but yeah. Other than that, that's pretty uh, much consensus. Yeah. So um, I just wanted to present a, a different worldview, right? Well, you talked a lot about food. I, I, I don't know too much about the food aspects of evolution. I don't really have too much information about that. But what I do have is like, what if I were to present information that could uh, can refute the theory of evolution altogether. Like, what if evolution, what if evolving from a lower species wasn't how it happened? Like, how we came on the planet, how we came here, how we originated. Um, like Scientology. Sorry. <laughs> there, um, there's, there, there's some uh, there's some archaeological evidence that you know it holds just as much weight as um, you know as you know as the evolutionists uh display it today or um you know how they present it today so i've been reading this book here i mean just i don't know if you guys can see it well I've hey been reading Logan. this book here oh, sorry my bad sorry to interrupt so i figure out how to uh use that thing the one that you sent me on twitter do you want me to show that right now yeah and then also bob your camera's off so nobody can see your book i don't know why your yeah, camera's just, off so. do you want me to show it I right just, now i just figured that no i think it's because my battery's running low Okay. Yeah, you can put up that picture now if you want. Just just share it for like twenty seconds. Yeah. Sorry. This. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Bob, but this just was a a picture that uh, just shows uh, the uh, where humans lie on the uh, evolutionary tree of primates. If you want to throw that up there? If you can't figure it out, that's fine. But go ahead, Bob. Yeah. So in this book, right, it's called Forbidden Archaeology. It's from uh, two. Uh, it's from a man named Michael Cremo and Michael uh, Richard Thompson. You know, I have to, you know, give them their props on all the information that they presented there. So what they do is, um, they they present a lot of archaeological evidence to show that human beings have been around for much longer than we expect. Like we'd expect in the common theory of evolution that human beings have been around for two hundred thousand years tops, right? Now, there's archaeological evidence to show that they've been around for millions of years before that. So, um, so I don't know if you want to, should I just start getting into some 
you want to like some examples of the evidence or should I yeah like is more? there is there like fossils like of, of humans yeah okay is that yeah, what you yeah. Think? yeah there's 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 human skeletal remains um what do you call them um artifacts footprints things like that that can uh and also like refutation of um of the you know of the of the the, the hominid finds today so he presents that all out on, on this book and there's like hundreds of examples so if even just one of them are found to be credible then you know that puts into question the theory of evolution if even one of them and he has hundreds of them and and the reason why he explains why we don't uh why we haven't heard of this information as before is because of something called like knowledge filtration so how that works is um well he uh he dug into like the secondary uh, information such as textbooks, you know, TV programs and, you know, magazines, but he was never able to find any evidence that was, that refuted evolution, right? Like that, that pretty much um, any archeological evidence that refuted evolution. But when he went and dug into the primary uh, scientific reports, Pretty much from like the 1800s, mid 1800s to the to the 20th century, like he he found a lot more evidence that wasn't being presented. Mm -hmm. Follow me so far. Yeah. Like so yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think like of of the fossils, right? You know, um, Broski, I don't think you were able to put that picture up. It didn't work. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. it did work. I um, I don't know how. Do you want me to show it up again? Oh, okay. Maybe I just can't see it on the Hangouts, and it actually worked. Yeah, because it only just thing. shows like just just one picture. But I don't know if you do. You want me to just do that? Yeah. So no, just what I was just going to comment on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I can see it popped up on the screen. I was just going to look at it for a sec. So the the way the the way it shows like humans how they all stemmed from that one monkey, and then it shows all the other monkeys. It's kind of weird to me to think like. Well, I, I mean, if all oh, this is in line and all these other monkeys are around right now, then like it, you're going to have to like, the people would have to like re-explain where all these other monkeys came from as well. You know what I mean? Like the bonobo yeah. and all these other things. I, like where I, did these monkeys come from? I, I just got a question. And what? Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just got a question. Isn't there like 95 blood relation between chimpanzees and humans? that dna or something like yeah, that yeah dna basically yeah i think it's like 99 i think it's 99 percent. i thought it was 95 yeah i think it's 90 no i think and 95 i think is humans and pigs i think 90 it's like 98 or 99 for uh humans and a whole bunch of different primates and chimpanzees the most i think okay right yeah so i remember being taught that you know in high school and college but you know, as, at a second glance, it, 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 I don't think it holds that much that it's not really exactly evidence for evolution. Like, it doesn't mean that we came from that, 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 you know, that animal, right? Like, it, we, we may have um, the same uh, DNA, but that's sort of just a blueprint of how you make things. So it's like of how you make living organisms, right? So mm -hmm. it could be the same, but we just have some differences, you know? Our designer made us you know, started off with the same template, let's put it that way, and then just sort of made these different tweaks. Okay, so, yeah, I got a question about that. So, like, so I said the ancient monkey, they found this fossil, right, like 55 million years ago, and that was the only monkey fossil that they they found, and it, it shows, like, all these other monkeys came from this one monkey. You're saying, like, humans were around at the same time as that, or, like, how many millions of years ago? Where humans around? Okay, um, some of the evidences found here that's presented, like um, they would find uh, different types of artifacts, skeletal remains, footprints, and layers of rock that date back hundreds of millions of years ago. Now, I know that's hard to take in, but you know that's what the the, the evidence shows. And the and these so are the evidences one? that these these are evidence that you know they were presented. You know, back in the 1800s, late 1800s, you know, turn of the century, uh, not turn of the century, but uh, yeah, exactly, turn of the century type um, around that time. But 
you know, they were explained away, you know, saying that they're either mysteries or they were uh, frauds or something like that. But in the book, you know, there's 900 pages of just an analysis of all these uh, reports and, you know, just a lot of documents. He goes through a lot of documents and he goes through all of it. And it's just, and it's just like, it's hard to refute. Yeah. So what's like, like he'll, he'll I mean, through, um, it, it's kind of, it's kind of easy to say like, there's lots of stuff, but like, what's the most solid piece of evidence? Like if you could link me to something, like what's the most solid one All right. Uh, that, that shows, that shows something. All right. I'll just read some of them. Okay. So, um, we'll just, there was a there was a scientist, right? I mean, a geologist. Her name was Virginia Steen McIntyre. She was, okay. um, yeah, she was the in the she was doing a um, a site in uh, Mexico. I think the place is called Huella Laco, Mexico. It's like in 1970, right? And then there she found a bunch of spear points. So um, like spear points, you know, like stone tools, stone tools and artifacts. She found them, right? And uh, in Mexico, and then, uh, and then she was a geologist. And then when, when they went there, when they went to go uh, date the site, they did it in four different ways, right? So the, the it's pretty conclusive of what the date is. So the date that she found, or that her team found, was uh, two hundred fifty thousand years ago. So already we, we can see here that um, you know, especially being in America. Where the common theory says that we've only been in America for the last thirty thousand years, maximum, right? Because we, mm -hmm. we came from we came from the ice bridge over from like from Russia, that area, right? Coming from Africa to into Russia, over the ice bridge into Alaska, down to the Americas. And that supposedly happened maximum thirty thousand years ago, according to the the uh, the modern uh, paradigm of evolution right now. Mm -hmm. So 250,000 yeah, years true. ago. Yeah, 250,000 yeah, kind of years ago. So maybe, like, you don't think there, like, maybe there was, like, any, uh, some primates along the equator somehow, maybe? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that was like, taken into consideration, but the theory of evolution right now says that Homo habilis was the first tool maker, and that was only, like, you know, I don't, I don't know, but, um, but that was, well, yeah, like, when I was talking about, about tools, habilis, yeah, the ancient monkey was the first tool maker because he would use the insect stick that I was talking about. But like, I don't know specifically about spearheads. Like stone though. tools and, and I don't know what they're right. right, only only humans mm -hmm. are known to make those kinds of tools. Like they even make them today. Like some Aboriginal tribes and things like that. They use like very basic stone tools that were found millions of years ago. They're still using those tools now. So they find these mm -hmm. tools two hundred fifty thousand that date back two hundred fifty thousand years ago. Now, when she wanted to go and uh, to publish these dates, she they, she she received a lot of backlash. They, she lost her career. Um, she was labeled as a maverick, as an attention seeker. But um, so, but you know, um, she she said, "What the heck? You know, she's gonna publish the the truth anyway. She's gonna publish her findings anyways." You know, and when she did that, she you know her career just she she wasn't able to work in her chosen field anymore. Well, that's so that, good that shows, because, like, that, say, that shows the knowledge. I saw, I saw a thing about yeah, fire, yeah. right? Like, I was looking up the evolution of fire, and it said, you know, these people think that it was a million years ago. These people think it was two hundred thousand years ago. But like, both the things are published, and people are kind of like okay with both theories. So why, why is this one lady just seem like such a quack, though? Like, is it did she actually like commit fraud or something, or like? Because I don't understand. Uh, why it's somebody because, would just be like you're crazy? Yeah, it's because the date is too far back. Two hundred fifty thousand years ago, human beings aren't supposed to even be um, be have evolved yet. So to be to have humans, uh, it was a human site. It's not just um, it's not just the spear points. There's like a lot of like a numerous artifacts. So they, you know, known to be human artifacts. So to be 250,000 years ago in the Americas, it's just, it's just unheard of. All right. So, yeah, I mean, these things that you bring up, though, can you also, like, link me them after so I can put them in uh, the description box so people yeah. can look at them? Yeah, I'm also intrigued to actually uh, see them myself. Sure. Um, I don't have links, like, online. You know what I mean? 
I have the book, and the book has the okay. slides. I can cite them for you. I can okay. do that. Um, yeah. So what's, I mean, that's 250,000 years ago, but what's something that's like millions of years ago that has evidence? Okay. All right. Let me look, let me look for another one. Okay. So, uh, okay. So Mary Leakey, right? She's a famous anthropologist or paleoanthropologist, right? Mm -hmm. Ever heard of her? Mary Leakey? Mary who? No. Mary Leakey. Mary Leakey. She's, she's a big name in, in anthropology. She, she found a lot of, mm -hmm. uh, I think like a lot of hominid fossils that we take to be, you know, human ancestors in Africa, like all the white gorge, you know, she, they're, they're, they're big, she's a big name. So in 1979, she found footprints that were indistinguishable from human footprints, right? And um, they're dated back 4 million, 4 million years ago. They date back to stone, the, 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 the geological formation. Um, they dated back to 4 million years ago, right? Using like some, you know, they, they have some uh, radiometric dates that they can use the date. It's not perfect, right? But they can give like a ballpark ranges. But um, so these are human footprints at the time where even before Lucy was supposed to have come out. Lucy was what, 3.5 million years ago? Yeah, so I think it was that or 8, 3.8 or something. Let me. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, it's like, it's like up there climb, climbing up to four. So we have four million years ago, human footprints in around the same area where it was Africa, right? Um, so when they asked her, like, what do you think made these, these, these footprints that are just indistinguishable from humans? So what she said that, uh, I think, you know, this is Michael Kimmel, that he did a lot of analysis and he read all the reports. And um, according to that, she said that, um, that it must have been a human ancestor with the same type of foot as modern humans, like anatomically accurate, you know, anatomically modern humans. So, you know, we, we only know of one type of animal who has the footprints of a human being, right? Like, you can't really say that it's another animal because uh, um, Australopithecus afarensis, which is Lucy, she had an opposable. Uh, her big toe was, was like a thumb, you know, stuck out from the side of her foot. But these footprints weren't. They were just like human. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's four million years Weird. ago. Weird, right? So th th there's like hundreds of these accounts, but they're always they're always um, they're always labeled as like anomalous. So when they're anomalous, you know, people seem to just brush them aside. But when you collect them all. They they become they become not so anomalous anymore. Now they become like a big bulk of 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 uh, of, uh, of evidence. You want some more? Yeah, I was just looking at what you said about something. It says the world's oldest javelins. Uh, the world, yeah, the world's oldest javelins, stone spears from two hundred and eighty thousand years ago. Uh, provides clues as how to humanity evolved. Um, and they were discovered in Africa. It says, yeah, this is something else, I guess. But they said that they discovered them in Africa. Maybe this is something else. Yeah. That's what they're saying. Yeah, so they're saying it's javelins. Um, so they're saying like human ancestors or hominids who are using spears, basically. Yeah, so it says the picture of a Homo uh, Hedelbergensis dated back 400,000 years ago. Uh, and it's a complete, the most complete fossil skulls ever found. And these were the, these were the uh, types of man that invented spearheads. 400,000 years ago, yeah. but it says in Africa, though, so I don't know. Yeah, so if I'm not, like, mistaken, I think, I think um, Homo heidelbergensis, I think that's the Homo erectus, right? They pretty much around the same time that they pretty much, you know, pretty much the same type of animal or hominid, right? So, mm -hmm. um, but, okay, um, heidelbergensis. Okay, so um, a lot of these these guys, like they, sometimes they're like, uh, they interpret them to be more human-like than they really are. So they can have like, 
Okay, okay, there was this guy, right? Uh, let me think of his name. Eugene Dubois. He found. He was he was the guy who discovered the Java Man. You heard you ever heard of Java Man? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. He, he was yeah. He was like a Java Man is like a, a skeleton. Well, he wasn't a skeleton. He was like a, he was pretty much the first Homo erectus that they found. And they you know for a while they were thinking that he was the the missing link that was you know so expected you know to be found you know the missing link you know it was a big deal but what he did was he found like in java that's was like around the indonesia area so he found a skull which is very primitive like very much like an ape and then around 40 feet away he saw he found a femur which is like a thigh bone so he that so he said hey that that, that that thigh bone is very much like you know very accurate close to human thigh bone so he said hey like this this thigh bone and this uh this skull must belong together so it's not warranted that he puts them together you know they're found so far apart and he puts them together and says hey i found the the uh the, the, the missing link so he yeah, said, that's, that's what somebody did with a brontosaurus right yeah. So, so he finds this this skull, right? It's it's very it's very primitive, like, and he says that hey, you must have walked upright because look at the thigh bone; it's just like a human. Well, they they since then, like, they found other uh, they found other Homo erectus and was more complete skeletons, but the the thigh bone isn't like the one that he found. So if you if you take if you if you put those two if you put those two facts together or those two um, ideas together, it could mean that human beings were living at the same time as this ancient ape that they're saying is is a Homo erectus. So it could have been like Homo erectus and Homo sapiens were living at the same time. Yeah, like modern day modern I'm just wondering what, at the same time. I think the biggest question though that everybody would be wondering is why why is none of this stuff like taken seriously though. Yeah, so, yeah. So uh, I mentioned something called a process called knowledge filtration that Michael Kamel he he coins that term because he, as he's reading through the material, he realizes that a lot of the times people like the scientists, if they don't believe a a piece of evidence fits into the common into the common accepted paradigm, they find some way to discredit it and they find a way to brush it aside and bury it under like. You know heaps of other you know material that's you know that's not going to be found it's not going to be published mm -hmm. so it's like if we find something that's against our you know common accepted theories it's, it's it's taken that to be anomalous and it's not taken seriously and people would usually it's usual it's common to say like you know it's just it's, it's not um it's anomalous it's uh it could be a hoax Things like this, or they find some other way to to uh, to explain it away. Okay, so I mean, from what from what you've read, right? From all the the things that you've read, so like, when exactly do you think like human beings uh, came to Earth? Earth, we're on. Earth. Um, I think human beings have been around since the beginning that Earth has been here. Yep. Since the Earth's been here, yeah, that's okay, what it so shows. Because there's there, there there's evidence here that shows it, it's very very anomalous, right? They found like little stone balls, like metal balls with grooves, like parallel grooves, uh, carved into the middle of them. And you know these things are dated back billions of years back in formations that are billions of years old. So it's like very anomalous. It's well, here's here's the thing that I find weird is like okay, so they they know like you know like chickens are actually like the uh, the a common ancestor of the dinosaurs, right? And um, or like the most common ancestor of the dinosaurs. And then we have things like like sharks that have been around forever, right? Um, yeah. And but then. But then you're also saying there's like just a plethora of this information. So if there's a plethora of this information, why it seems like that would fit into some sort of common narrative if there was a whole bunch of it, right? 
So I, I'd say like, cause you're saying, well, just because it doesn't fit in what's, what's normal, you know, right. but if it is, if there's a bunch, then that's normal. So it's kind of weird, but yeah, yeah exactly. That's what, I, that's what I'm saying. Like this information should be normal. Like there's more information in this book than, than I think that there is, you know, hominid skulls who I think are just apes, you know, they're just like apes. Like I do believe that there are like homo erectus. Like, like I can't, you can't really deny that, but, but to say that we came from homo erectus like that, I don't disagree that, that I don't agree with because so, there, there's evidence yeah, three, to show that human beings have been around the same time and even before homo erectus. So where I started on the thing here, I said 395 million years ago, tetrapods evolved from low blind fish as animals moved onto the land. So are you saying humans were on the land before animals evolved onto the land? Yeah. So there's a thing. Um, here's another concept that's pretty hard to, uh, to get because the, all the ancient, like ancient schools of wisdom, they say that, you know, like the Mayans say that, like, like the earth has a cyclic um, time, you know, they see time as cyclical. So civilizations have risen and fallen many, many times. So, you know, we have to um, take that into account. So even though like there may be humans back then, it, it, it could have been from a different, whole different era from when, you know, there, um, you know, from a different cycle. Yeah. Kind of, kind of get what I'm saying. Yeah, you would think humans would be a whole lot smarter though if they were around for that long. You know yeah, I mean, mean? If they, because because civilizations are rising and falling, so they would yeah. fall back to primitive state and then rise back up to high civilization, and then you know, cataclysm would happen and they would fall back to a you know primitive state. Yeah, but even and even though the technology. Over, over, even though the technology and like all of the the system and civilization falls back to a primitive state, like they would still have the same uh, amount of neurons and size brain, though, right? And it would just be constantly growing. So you would think that they would still be like even if, even if like you know everything went dark and they had nothing left and only like a few people survived and had to start over again or whatever, right? Those, those people would be smart as hell. And then it, they continuously would get more and more smart, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of things I can say about that. Have you ever seen the movie of, well, never mind. Well, this movie called, uh, well, it had John Travolta in it. He was like an alien in it. What was it? Battlefield Earth, I think. It was a while, it was a while ago. Mm. So no, in that movie, they showed... In that movie, they show like uh, uh, human civilization, like you know, had fallen back to like a primitive state because all the books, all the learning, all that, all that has has disappeared and is gone. So they have to relearn everything all over again. Yeah, you know, but you know what I, you know what I mean. Like the the ability to learn, uh, like would would still be there. Like so, so like let's say a baby is born now um compared to you know um you know a hundred thousand years ago like the the baby being born today is just going to be smarter on average than baby a hundred thousand years ago right and then even a hundred thousand years before that would be and yeah, then it yeah. would just keep going back just because of, of brain size right and and also like it's just passed on from generation to generation. Like you are just constantly evolving into a smarter being. Yeah. Well, well, I'm think, I'm saying like we didn't evolve to have a, a brain, a bigger brain. We we were we were created with this brain intact already. Is what I'm saying. Is what I'm proposing here. Yeah. Like we didn't yeah. I get that. Brain. So you're not, you're saying like right now it's not even like your brain's not growing right now. I mean, it's it may be growing from childhood to adulthood, but if, as yeah. evolving so, from like a puny brain to a, a smarter creature, I don't think that that's happening. Yeah. I think that we've always been smart. Okay, so if you so you so I mean, if you were to think about humans and animals, then so you would say like adaption 
is not really even a thing. It's uh, well, just specifically with brains. You said that. Um, say that first part one more time. So you would say like adaption is not even a thing. So like a hundred thousand years from now, like humans won't be way smarter than they are now just because they've right. evolved and adapted. Yeah. And uh, and and neither will animals. They'll just be the exact same. Right. They'll be the same. Huh. So like, like I guess I mean. So let's let's think. You think about. So you only believe in small adaptions. So like. If yeah, I play like a, soccer, if I play soccer every day, I'm going to be a better soccer player by adaption. But you don't believe in evolutionary species adaption. Yeah, the, the, the creationists they call it micro micro evolution. So we, you know, dogs can change their form, like form from like they're they're really different. They look like pit bulls to small chihuahuas, but they're still a dog. So the variation has brought them to different extremes, but there, there'll always be a dog, but that's okay. what the creation is saying, and that's what I, I, I believe is very correct about that. Okay, so, so I won't even talk about the food thing because the food thing kind of doesn't make any sense. Then, because if if you don't believe in long term adaption, then any type of food would be equally good. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so a steak, steak would be as equal. A steak would be equally as good as uh, as a pineapple because every every animal would just be equally adapted to the same foods because there is no long term adaptions. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, the, we see that there are some uh, short term adaptions, right? Like we, you know, we get you know the common uh, the you know high cholesterol and things. Like we have bad effects from eating food that we shouldn't be eating. Right. Yeah, yeah, but then you can look at long-term adaptions too. So let's say, let's say there was a starving mother in um, like a poor country in Africa or something, yeah. and right. uh, she was was hardly ever eating, and then her child was hardly ever eating. Eventually, that would be in their genes, and they they could survive longer than somebody else without food because that's in their genes, and things like that have been proven over generations. So why wouldn't why wouldn't you say if it goes on generation after generation that it would be an even long term adaption after that? Um, I don't think I'm getting what you're saying. You're saying okay, so if they well, if, so, there's micro adaptions, right? So, yeah, yeah. So you're, so like learning to play soccer and whatever, and you're a better soccer player. That's a micro adaption. Then there's yeah. also family gene adaptions. Where if like this has been proven, if a mother is starving and has a child, like she's always hungry, there's not much food around, uh, then the the child can survive longer without food than other children because he has like a starving uh, gene adaption. Oh, okay. So yeah, that's I mean, like so that's a that's a medium adaption, and then there's the even yeah. longer adaption. Yeah, yeah. Um, I get that. Um. They say that um, when, like, suppose suppose his hunger isn't stressed so much, you know, eventually, they say that eventually, all the adaptions revert back to the uh, the original, if left uh, left alone or left. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying, but um, yeah, it could be true. Uh, that is true, right? Yeah, I mean, so uh, explain like so the study that I just said like if you if you looked at primates and you found to, like this is a study that just happened. If you look at 140 different species of primates and it all lines up with the ones that eat the most fruit are the smartest. Um, that's that's a long term adoption. You know what I mean? Okay, like, that's yeah. not a micro adaption. Right, right. Uh, yeah. But so, yeah, but I mean, there's the some things is, that are very hard to is, well, it's hard to explain well, from a creationist standpoint, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't see how that like. Uh, I mean, like, does that food ever change? The the cre the creature, you know, I don't. It, it never changes it. Well, the food does change the creature because I can't handle meat very well, right? 
But yeah. if I ate meat, if I ate meat every day and then my children ate meat every day and their children ate meat every day, eventually we would get adapted to that after millions and millions of years. Like you can you can yeah. see uh, that that happening with cow's milk. Like some people are tolerant, other people aren't. You can see that with all sorts of foods. And those are all adaptions yeah. long term. Okay, yeah, long term adaptions. Um So yeah, so, like so, if so, you can see that with food, food if yeah. you can see that with food, why can't you see that with everything else? Like food fuels the brain, right? So that's what I was talking about. About like if if these if you agree that you know like um, or or like there's no valid arguments against this study that shows like you know the more fruit these primates ate, the smarter they got, like. You can even just see that they're getting smarter based on what they're eating, no matter what it was. So if humans were around forever, how could well, their intelligence maybe, level always remain the same? Maybe they're not getting smarter because they're eating meat. Maybe just the smart animals eat fruit. And maybe it's, that's just the way they were designed. <laughs> that could be it. But uh, yeah, I mean, there's so many things, though, that it just it's so hard to explain about evolution like uh, just just the study of animals of like um you know animals moving from the sea to the land like in itself is a it is the the very first adaption there right and and like now they can breathe on the land and then they don't need you know gills and stuff anymore and and uh you know like the i don't know I mean, there's so many things that's like, there's more evidence for evolution than there is for creationism, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I don't think so. There's, there's a lot of evidence. I mean, evidence for evolution, there's nothing very solid about it. There's, I mean, it's a good, like, interpretation, but there's nothing like the, 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 the fossil record is missing to the point where you can't, you can't, it's hard to say this came from that, this animal came from that, like mammals came from, I don't know, reptiles and things like that. Like, where is the intermediary species? So why do I have different skin color than, than someone from Africa, like a black person? Uh, could be that short, could be that short term adaption, the same, the same thing that's happening to a pit bull and a, and a, and a, and a chihuahua, you know, the, we're still human beings. We just have differences. Yeah, it's but it's not really. Isn't that like a you know thousands and thousands of years adaption? Like it's not just like I moved and my skin changed. Right. Yeah. I mean, so where yeah, where does okay, the, yeah. how many years how many years is the cutoff point for adaptions? If it can happen over uh, thousands of years, why can't it happen over millions of years? Like okay for for that adaption that long term adaption it can happen like I don't deny that it can happen. But will it ever change a black person to be a different species from you? I don't think it will. If if if, you, if they remain in Africa and then I remain you know in Southeast Asia, I don't think we'd ever change into a different species. We'd always be human. Okay, so what about like so look at like a polar bear, right? So, okay. I mean, they they changed into like a different a different species, right? Because they're in the uh, in a different climate, right? So they adapted to that climate. Now they're a different species. So the I mean, examples do exist of, of are they, are they different species or are they still a bear? Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know what you mean. They're still a bear, but like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I have to study that more. I'm sure there is examples of like things changing species. Um, or I don't know if the word species is the correct term that I'm even looking for that they would be changing. But I mean, either way, it just still it shows like adaption when you move climates, right? Like, yeah, um, yeah. adaption to the climate is happens for sure. For sure, that happens. Yeah. So that's that's what I meant about like that was the the. One of the reasons why I read the definition is like uh, an organism or species becomes better suited to its environment. 
adapt, right? So that's basically what adaption is. So yeah. um, in order to do that, you have to learn. You have to be more intelligent or you'll die. So that's like one of the things like you, you were forced you are forced to uh, learn where the fruit is and work as a team and forced to become smarter. And now that I'm smarter, oh man, now I can do other things like build a computer, you know, and now I can do this and now I can do that. And and eventually you can build like, you know, AIs that'll do all sorts of crazy things. But like, and those are all, that's all evolution and adaption. Like that's what it is. You think robots might take over the earth? I mean, it's a possibility, but yeah. you know, who knows? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think that's Hollywood fear monger. Well, maybe that already happened, right? And that's why it was the demise <laughs> yeah. of human civilization yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, right. They say that uh, you know more advanced human beings live in the past. Like more advanced than us like we think we're so advanced with our technology but our technology does nothing really for us it's actually driving us away from nature and away from a healthy lifestyle you know what yeah. i mean like I agree the more with that advanced for the most people, part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so like we think we're, we're so we think that advancement is technological advancement but maybe advancement means you know who can who can live within the environment and be more prosperous that way and live you know and you know, I don't want to get all uh, philosophical and everything, but you know, they're about you know uh, spiritual cultivation and things like this. Like these things, like they're they're not even like accepted these days, and you know they accepted it in the ancients, and then that's what made them more advanced because they had that higher knowledge. They were more advanced, and they had like you know they 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 talked about them having like you know the ability to communicate with telepathy. They could like you know, use mantras and things like this to like manipulate the world around them and things like this. So they were more advanced. Like we don't have these, these abilities, but they did in the past. Like that would explain why these giant monoliths, uh, not monoliths, but megaliths were made. You know, we just can't explain how they made them. Even today, we can't even explain. There's so many theories of how they made the pyramid. You know, like they just don't know how they made them. And then just, I think this is like evidence to show that in the past they were uh they were more advanced than we are now it's not that i don't think that it's just just that one pharaoh or king had like a million slaves and the million slaves somehow made you know made the pyramid it's not that they had them they had all these people so therefore they, they were able to create a pyramid like i don't think that's the case like they had yeah that's a weird, that's a weird thing how they could, they how could somebody people. prove though how could somebody prove that people communicated with telepathy like you can never prove that yeah right That's yeah like really uh, hard well there are there are some there are some uh some some uh people are testing them these days um you just gotta go out and look for them you know i think there was i think there was even some kind of report i remember looking at it back a long time ago like even like the u.s government was even using uh remote viewing to help them, you know, get 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 one get ahead up on the you know, the Soviets and things like that. So you know, you just gotta look yeah. for them. And then they are explained in the um the ancient text. So you know, if you believe in the ancient text, yeah. there, you, there you go. I have it there. Yeah, it's like the whole thing about like like uh, the Hare Krishna stuff is kind of like kind of like the anti natalism stuff. It's like you first have to buy into the pre initial premise. And then from there, then you're like, okay, yeah, this is 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 logical and this makes sense or whatever. You know, things might fall into place for you, but the the original premise itself has no proof, right? So then, and then you you could say like, oh, there's all this other proof, but like, I mean, I haven't seen any of it, so I can't really comment on the proof, right? Like, you you could say like it's in the text, and you could you could link it to me, and I'll look at it, but like uh i haven't seen it yet so i can't i can't buy into something that hasn't been proven to me you know what i mean right right so um what yeah I, I know what you mean like it's hard to like you know in our everyday lives you don't see these things happening therefore you know it has to be some kind of stories or myths or something like that we can't really believe them we can't really take them literally but you know, if we 
if we if we search deep enough, we can find evidences of the metaphysical. Like I was telling you about, uh, here's some names here, like near death experiences and uh, what are the out of body experiences? Like these things are real reincarnation. These things have been documented, but you know, will people believe it? No, they'll just say no. It's anomalous. It's it's too out there. There must be something, some kind of fakery going on. But you know, it's all there. Like they're done by real scientists. They're done by real researchers. And you know they'll stick by yeah. it. They'll, they'll publish yeah, the results. Like, so will people believe it? No, they won't believe it. I need like a lot of evidence to actually like believe something. Like so, like if somebody says, "Oh, there's this, there's a person saw a ghost and it's documented," right? Like I'm gonna need a lot more evidence than that, right? So you know, like like flat earthers or something, right? Yeah. Like I'm gonna need a lot more evidence than you just telling me. You know all these things and then i and then i asked the person well what's the reason why the government's you know hiding this and they just say knowledge is power i mean to me that's just uh a crazy conspiracy to, to just, just have no reason even behind it and then say things like yeah. well the government's I, shooting missiles into the ocean and stuff like that what? i mean i can't just buy, i can't buy any of that um yeah. you are you do you believe in flat earth or round earth or which shape no, is the earth? I don't believe the earth that. is a square. They're easily, they're easily, <laughs> they're easily debunked. Yeah, they're easily debunked. Like there's no ice wall. I'm just kidding. The earth <laughs> is a velociraptor. Antarctica, and we're surrounded by an Antarctica, right? That's what they said. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, but that's but, a, that's a thing that goes but, along with creationism. Is uh, I I know a guy who's a, a creationist. Uh, who actually is a, a flat earther because he um, that I don't know for whatever reason they go together. They kind of go hand in hand. They kind of yeah they go hand in hand because what they describe in uh, Genesis is what they believe is the model of the Earth, right? Isn't that right? Like there's like a firmament, you know, the Earth is flat. Yeah, I think yeah Genesis. I think I, it does talk about the thing that the, the stars Earth is flat. like God created the, the heavens and the stars and yeah. put them in the firmament or something like that. Yeah, I heard. I heard they said the four corners of the world. So they're saying that as in, like, the Earth is a, a square or it's flat. It's but like, the four corners of the world is northeast, south, and west. Right. Right. <laughs> that's what it means. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so much to refute them. Like, what is it? The the uh, the plane ride from South America to Australia does exist. You know, they say that this doesn't exist, and it should take like way longer than it than they say it does so yeah. yeah they can they can tell it. they can see the the mass of the ship over the horizon they can see the ship sinking uh yeah. we can see yeah we can see constellations on one side of the earth and see the other set of constellations on the other side of the earth you know showing that you know we're surrounded by the stars and not that the stars are on top of us only mm -hmm. right so many, yeah. Yeah, so and I've, I've actually flown myself from Toronto to Japan and then from Japan to Vancouver. So literally around the whole world. Okay. <laughs> so, and then, you know, so it's like. You sure the plane wasn't flying in a circle? Be, yeah, and, and then they showed me the map and be like, well, you actually went this way and this way and this way. <laughs> crazy. But yeah, if you actually do like, so, so you said this stuff's in the book, though, right? If you do have like uh, links. To uh, any of the stuff that you think is like good evidence um, yeah. for, like you know, humans were around millions of years ago or something, send that to me on Facebook, and I'll, I'll link it in the comment section description box and stuff like that, so people can see. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go. I'll go home. Well, you're gonna put it on your your own video, right? Yeah, I'll, I'll put this on yeah. my channel too as well. Yeah, your channel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're like. So I'll, I'll do that. I'll have to go home and do that. Though. Yeah, we're like 50 mi 58 minutes in. Does anyone want to finish up? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, that's it's. Uh, I, I can't really disagree with anything that you're saying because it's like I need to uh, actually look at the stuff uh, before I can even comment on it, right? So that's the hard part about well, what I would do. What I would do. What I'll suggest that you do, or anybody else who's listening, do is just um, type in Michael Cramo. 
Michael Cremo, C R E M O, into into YouTube, and he does like so many lectures, like it's crazy. Like he has a lot, and just listen to one of his lectures. It's like an hour each lecture, and he'll tell you like what's going on. Like evidence is being suppressed. They want you to believe in yeah. the theory of evolution because if you have that consciousness, then we're then we're all just animals fighting for survival here. I think I think Darwin's um, book. I think his uh, his his origin of species had a extended title, which was Origin of Species and the Preservation of of the Favored Races in the Struggle for Life. So I think that you know at the time of the 1850s, you know that time England was over there, you know trying to uh, or not trying to, but they were uh, subjugating, you know colonizing India. You know we had people in the Americas; they're over here like taking over land in the Americas. So. I think that with this theory, we, 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 what comes along with it is, you know, like a, um, some type of uh, superior superiority complex is what, is what goes along with the, the, the theory. That's kind of a little bit of what you just said, too, because, like, the government uh, clearly is in favor of, like, Christianity and Catholicism and stuff, right? Like, they're not against any of that. So it's like they do... They do want you to be spiritual in a way. It's not like they're trying to shut down churches and stuff like that. But then, uh, and then on the opposite side of that, it's like if you're a person like me who, um, you know, I don't believe in, in any type of God specifically or anything like that. Um, it's not like I don't see it as like, oh, you're a, like a lost cause or, you know, like, a, you know, a lost soul or something, or your life is pointless or anything like that. It's like, you could still, even if you don't believe in anything, you could still just enjoy life Yeah, and just be, enjoy being here. But then you can also like, you know, it, it's not, it's not necessarily going to mean that you're doing bad things either. Like if you're smart enough to realize that other people want to enjoy life like me and do unto others, just that basic principle. And then also, I wouldn't want it done to me, so I'm not going to do it to them. You know, like, um, you, you, can, you can still just have a totally enjoyable life and, and teach your kids to do the same. And uh, I don't think that, that stuff's even necessary. You know, I mean, it could be beneficial in a way, but like, again, it could also be very harmful to teach people things that aren't fully proven. You know what I mean? Yeah, that aren't the truth. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to tell you guys, like, you guys can't have fun and you guys, you know, or you guys going to go to hell. Like, I'm not going to say any of that stuff. Like, everybody has the free will to do what they want. But I just want to put it out there that, you know, like, it's what the human form of life is very rare and we shouldn't, like, squander it having too much fun, like YOLO. You know what I mean? Like, YOLO, you only live once, so yeah. I got to have, enjoy my time while I'm here. Like, the human form of life is, is very rare and it's our opportunity to to study these subjects. You know what yeah. I mean? True. Yeah, that's another weird thing, YOLO so too, right? Like that, people, people say YOLO. Yeah. Like, like, no, I don't think anybody I don't think anybody actually believes YOLO. Like, cause if somebody was like, YOLO, YOLO, like to what extent are you like, <laughs> screw it, let's do crazy shit? Like if you were well, to that extent, you would just go shoot heroin and go rob a bank like, right like you would jump yeah. off a bridge <laughs> yeah i mean yo. i mean to like meat eating you know it's like yolo you only live once let's enjoy the time and we just eat whatever we want you know it's like they don't care it's, it's, that, yeah. that's that attitude it's like it's, it's it's that attitude it's like yolo we gotta enjoy it. and then plus i think, the, I think that's the just revolution where we're just animals so Therefore, we could yeah. eat animals. I think that's just the way animals. to pretend to be cool, though. Like that's just how people are. Like, yeah, I'm cooler than everybody. I'm, I'm adventurous. I'm fun. You know, just a, just a way to show people, like, hey, come hang with me. You'll, you'll have a good time. Yolo, right? But I don't think anybody's actually about that, about that life, except for like friggin' serial killers or something, right? Crazy people. I don't know, but yeah, a lot of people though, like I've asked or I've heard them say, like, you know. It's, it's very common then for them to say like we gotta enjoy our life while we have it you know it's, it's, you know it's not bad people saying that it's normal people to say we gotta enjoy life while we still can 
Yeah. You know, well, yeah, that's a good thing, but not in a destructive way. Like meat, meat eating is a destructive way, right? Like yeah. enjoy yeah. life, yeah. but not at the expense of others. Yeah, yeah. That I can agree with. Yeah, and then yeah. So I mean, the the whole thing to me why uh, it doesn't make sense is like if I could see everyday adaptions. Like, so adaptions in everyday circumstances. If I could see just in my own life, like Broski works out and he could see adaptions to his own body just by hitting the gym over years and stuff. Uh, those are, you know, yearly adaptions. Then you could see, you know, long term adaptions in health, like, uh, you know, cholesterol buildup and things like that. And then, and then you could see, like, what I was talking about the genes getting passed on. And then you could even see it through thousands of years of things like oils, uh, having oil and uh, cow's milk. Why wouldn't there be even bigger adaptions? So that's why, again, it doesn't make sense to me that, you know, eventually it would cut off and like your brain wouldn't adapt and, you know, all these other things. And yeah, I mean, I just, to me, it doesn't add up. Okay. <clears throat> that's okay. Yeah. Yep. That's it. What do you think, Broski? Let's let Broski give his final thought here on, on what he thinks. Wait, are we talking about like just evolution in general? Sure. Like, yeah. what do you think about the whole thing? Yeah, I think it's pretty interesting. I mean, the whole thing about like, you know, the relation between like humans and other animals, like some people in Catholicism would, would say, like, oh, if there's monkeys, um, I mean, if there's humans, why is there like, if we evolve from monkeys why is there still monkeys and i would point out well if there's cats why is there still you know tigers you, you get yeah. what i'm saying yeah i mean yeah that's yeah. a that's a that's the dumbest thing ever that somebody would say that right it's like yeah. well if there's bonobos well why is there chimpanzees yeah like, yeah because they think like, that we came in <laughs> we came directly from the bonobo yeah when with the theory yeah, is, but, they're yeah. saying that we that we split from a different uh uh we split from the common ancestors. Is what, yeah. they, is what they want you to say. Like me, I'm an undecider, so it's like I can go both ways between like you know what atheists say and atheists say. It's like you know maybe perhaps there is a creator, but we just don't know. There's so many unanswered questions. Yeah. Yeah. So what? Right, yeah. Okay. What I, What I want to say is, you can know. You know, you can know if you if you given the right given the uh, the right amount of effort. Like you can know it, know it, but you, again, it's like it's not straight up proof. You know, it's it's known in the heart. You know, you know what I mean. So that's all I can say. Yeah. But there is evidence to show like different facets of the the Hare Krishna philosophy, philosophy. A lot of different aspects of it can be proven in different fields of of knowledge. So that's that's one one of the things why that helps that helps me in my my faith. You know. That is true. What, and this book, this book right, being yeah. with it. This book being one of them. Final question. Is monster energy from the devil? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I saw yeah. that video. The lady, how she like says like, oh, it's like from like Satanism. I was like. <laughs> was it like the Hebrew letters? Yeah, the Hebrew six, letters. Right? He's like, oh, that's 666 or whatever. I was like, okay. <laughs> nice. <laughs> But you're going I mean, to hell. <laughs> All right. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming on, Bob. And uh, thanks for hosting Broski. No problem, man. All right. No problem, Logan. Thanks for, uh, right, thanks and for letting me come on. Thanks, Broski. No I'll link your guys' channels, too, as well, in the uh, in the comments and stuff. So everybody subscribe to Broski and Bob. All right. And also, sub guys. subscribe to Logan, guys, and Bob. Okay. All right, I think that's the end of the discussion. Hope you guys enjoyed. And as always, uh, break your limits. Thank you.